Hey everyone, welcome to Tangled Threads. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's go. I need to get this off my chest. I committed an egregious act of infidelity, and I'm genuinely terrified to be judged. But I don't think I can bear the burden of guilt alone anymore. You see, I cheated on my husband with a poor man, and I feel terrible. A week ago, my husband's birthday bash was held at one of the city's most prestigious clubs, known for its ridiculously high entrance fees and opulent drinks. The air was saturated with a heady mix of expensive colognes and perfumes, as individuals clad in the finest couture chatted and laughed. The club's luxurious interior was a testament to its clientele's affluence, adorned with the finest marble and embellished with grand chandeliers that sprinkled diamonds of light across the faces of those who attended. Amid the celebration, I saw him. Not my husband, no. He was busy swaying on the dance floor, his normally austere face alive with joy and excitement. But I, his wife, the woman dressed in an extravagant Versace dress, did not wish to join him. Instead, my attention was drawn to a stranger, a mysterious man who seemed oddly out of place in the opulent surroundings. His eyes were the first thing I noticed, pools of liquid amber that seemed to hold a lifetime of stories. He was handsome, rugged even, with a charm that was inexplicably captivating. I sauntered over, careful not to trip on my Jimmy Choo's, and initiated a conversation. A flicker of surprise crossed his face before he flashed me a warm, inviting smile. His humble aura was refreshing amidst the overwhelming pretentiousness, and I found myself drawn to him. We exchanged numbers, and it was almost an unspoken agreement that we'd meet again. I took out my phone, the sleek device a stark contrast to the rustic charm of the man I'd just met. I hesitated before typing out a text. I need to leave the club. Upset stomach. Celebrate for both of us. Love you. My heart pounded in my chest as I hit send. The message seemed like a gross oversimplification of the whirlwind of emotions I was experiencing. Almost instantly, my phone buzzed with a reply from my husband. Take care, sweetheart. Don't worry about me, just get some rest. Love you more. His response was warm, caring, filled with the love that I was betraying. The words pricked my conscience, but I chose to ignore the nagging feeling of guilt. My phone buzzed again, and this time it was a message from the stranger. Are you coming home with me? I read his message again. There was an unexpected kindness in his words, a consideration that I hadn't anticipated. I left the club then, leaving behind a husband who loved me and entering a world of deceit that would eventually lead me to lose everything I held dear. With a whirlwind of emotions and guilt churning within me, I accompanied the stranger to his place, a hotel that exuded an air of luxury. His room was a stark contrast to the hotel's exterior, devoid of the expected opulence. Simple yet tasteful, it held an air of quiet comfort. We spent the night together, and even though I left at dawn, the taste of betrayal lingered. Days later, I found myself craving to see him again, a need driven more by guilt and confusion than genuine affection. When I proposed a meetup, his face took on a look of hesitation. His reluctance puzzled me, but then he confessed. The lavish dinners and the high-end hotel room were out of his league. I was taken aback. I had imagined him to be wealthy, an entrepreneur or a top-tier executive, perhaps. So I dug into his life and my world came crashing down. He wasn't wealthy. He worked at a local restaurant chain. The realization felt like a punch in the gut. I cheated on my wealthy husband, not with an equal, but with a man who earned a fraction of our monthly spending. I felt a sense of loss, a profound disappointment. In my warped reality, I thought it would somehow be better if I confessed to my husband. I rationalized that it wouldn't hurt him as much that he'd even laugh it off because my lover wasn't rich. So I spilled everything. The night at the club, the mysterious man, our tryst at the hotel, his true identity. I watched as his face fell, the joy and warmth draining away, replaced by shock, pain, and betrayal. He didn't laugh. He didn't say it was okay because the man was poor. The tears welled up in his eyes, his expression a tragic mirror of my betrayal. And that's when it hit me. The arrogance, the ignorance, and the shallow mindset that led me to believe that money made a difference. I justified my actions, even felt superior, just because I was wealthier. But I'd forgotten that beneath the wealth and the affluence, we were all human. My wealth didn't make my infidelity less significant, and the stranger's lack didn't make my betrayal less hurtful. Now, sitting in our luxurious home, Surrounded by the silence of my husband's absence, I feel awful. I cheated, and I hurt the people who mattered most. The remorse is immense, 
a bitter pill that's impossible to swallow. Thankful, though, I found man with a good heart, and he's willing to try and look past this mistake for a better future. Update. It's been a three weeks since my confession, and each day feels like a lifetime. My husband's face, usually soft and loving, was stern and resolute. He had had enough of my quote-unquote arrogance and rudeness. That evening, the mansion was quieter than usual. The servants had retreated, leaving just me and my husband in the grand living room. His face was set, jaw tight, eyes aflame with a pain that cut me deeper than any words could. I think you should leave, Penelope, he said, his voice steady. The words hung in the air between us, heavy and irrevocable. I was taken aback. What? You're kicking me out? I spluttered, clutching the golden embroidery of my Gucci gown. Just because I cheated with a poor man? He ran his hands through his hair, a sign of his frustration. It's not about the man being poor or rich, Penelope, he said, his voice barely a whisper. It's about the betrayal. It's about the disregard for our relationship and my birthday. But I thought you wouldn't care, I retorted, refusing to acknowledge the gravity of my mistake. He's not even half as wealthy as us. He stared at me for a long moment before shaking his head. That's your problem, Penelope. You think everything revolves around money, but it doesn't. You betrayed me. You betrayed our marriage. I... I can stay with him, I countered, a last-ditch attempt to assert control over the situation. At this, my husband merely sighed. The fire in his eyes had died, replaced with a tired resignation. Perhaps you should, he said, rising from his seat. It might give you the reality check you desperately need. As he walked away, I was left alone with my thoughts. I had not only lost a loving husband, but it also revealed the ugliness of my character. I had allowed my wealth to blind me from the simple truths of love, trust, and respect. I had yet to comprehend the magnitude of the damage I had done, not only to others, but to myself as well. As I stepped into the glitzy streets, I fumbled for my phone and texted the man I'd spent that ill-fated night with. Can I come over? I sent, my heart pounding in my chest. His reply was immediate and brief. Yeah, you can come over. There's something I need to tell you. The ambiguity of his message filled me with unease. Arriving at his modest apartment, I was greeted with a familiar face. His amber eyes held a different kind of warmth now, a warmth that wasn't for me. I've found someone, he confessed. My heart sunk at his words. She's not like you, he added. She's not interested in fancy clubs or grand parties. She celebrates my birthdays quietly with a homemade cake and a movie night. His words were a harsh reality check. There he was a man who'd lived a humble life, moving forward with someone who cherished him for who he was. And there I was, a woman who'd spent her life surrounded by luxury, losing the people who mattered because of my pride and arrogance. His girlfriend wasn't rich. She didn't spend her weekends in luxurious clubs, and she didn't measure people's worth by their bank accounts. But she was happy, and so was he. That was a kind of happiness that my wealth had never brought me, and probably never would. As I left his apartment, the weight of my actions crashed down on me. I was alone, cast out due to my shallow mindset and unreasonable behavior. I had lost my husband, and the man I'd briefly thought could be a refuge. But this isn't the end. It's a wake-up call, a chance for me to change and become a better person. I've hurt people, I've made mistakes, but I'll strive to learn from them. I'll work on my arrogance, my ignorance, and my rudeness. I've learned that wealth isn't everything, and treating people kindly regardless of their financial status, is what truly matters. I hope one day I can make amends with my husband and the man I cheated with. Guess the saying is true. The love of money is the root of all evil, and apparently also some really bad decision-making skills. What do you think? When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threads.